I'd like to um, introduce Dave to you, but before we get started with that, um, I just wanted to take a minute to remind you to be sure to enter the door prize drawing. You can visit Pavilion A to leave your registration card for the daily drawing. And don't forget to go to Pavilion A also for the organic cooking demonstration and for the kids' activities. Um, and finally, I'd like to ask that you hold all questions until the end of the speaker's presentation. If you do have a question, please come to this microphone up here uh, so it can be captured on the recording of this, uh, this talk. And if you have any trash, please take it with you. Um, and if you have anything that can be recycled, please take that and put it in the recycle bins. And if you have any cell phones, please put those on silent as well. Um, I would like to introduce Dave Pennington. Today's talk is going to be on aquaponics, the farm of the future. Please give a round of applause for Dave. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, this is my first talk at this fair. I've been coming to this for about 10 years, so I'm a little nervous, but bear with me. Um, most people have heard about aquaponics before, but some people haven't, and uh, I, know that I get a lot of questions. I'm over at Booth 104, and I have a lot of uh, information there, so if you have more questions after this is over, and I don't answer everything, please stop by Booth 104. I also do classes, two-day classes on aquaponics, and I teach people how to build their own systems and maintain them and understand them to where they can actually scale them up later on. Uh, aquaponics is the combination of aquaculture and hydroponics, two industries which have somewhat dirty aspects, and then when you put them together, it makes one clean industry. <laughs> There's more information over my booth. Okay, I already said that. Synergyfish.com is my website. It's down at the moment, but it'll be back up again soon. Okay, the basic concept of aquaponics is the, uh, the use of a plant medium to filter the water for the fish. Fish create uh, ammonia waste and it recirculate, recirculates through the uh, hydroponic bed to clean the water for the, for the fish and to provide nutrients for the plants. There's a lot of chemistry involved, the ammonia cycle where fish give off ammonia and it's broken down by bacteria in the system which uh, can, you know, converts to nitrites and then nitrates. This is uh, sort of a lot of chemistry that you really don't have to understand in order to build a small system, but if you're building a large system, you have to learn some chemistry. Uh, it's really an old idea. The Aztecs used it in ancient uh, Mexico, in uh, Chichen Itlan. They had huge aquaponic gardens. Take this down. This is a uh, woodcut of uh, how they did the aquaponics back then. They built little artificial islands in the middle of a lake, which is now Mexico City. This is a woodcutting of how it looked back in 1500. It was very impressive. This is the largest city in the world at the time when the Europeans showed up. They didn't know what to think. Of course, they were after the gold at the time. Uh, there are two basic uh, philosophies of aquaponics. One of them is deep water raft, where the plants are set on styrofoam rafts and the, and the roots hang down in the water, and they remove the uh, nutrients from the water in that, in that method. The other way is with gravel beds, where the water is circulated up into a gravel medium, where the plants are planted, and then they remove the, meat, the nutrients that way. This is a third way, which a lot of people, well, it's used somewhat, it's not used by, the other two are more prevalent, but this is another third way. This is called nutrient film technique. They use uh, sort of like a gutter system, and each plant is planted in a little hole, and the nutrient flows from top to bottom, and it, it uh, drenches the roots as it flows down. The advantages of this is that the raft, these uh, gutters can be scooted together when the plants are small, and it better utilizes your greenhouse space. There's also another sort of a newer branch of aquaponics which is a semi-integrated system wherein they take the water from the fish and they, they take it into a separate chamber and treat it for pH and temperature and then give it to the plants so that it's not just recirculating as is to the plants from the fish. They're actually treating it for pH and, and chemistry 
to optimize it for the plants. This is in the Netherlands, and it's it's an interesting new branch of aquaponics right now. It's going on. This is where I was trained. It's at the uh, University of Virgin Islands in St. Croix. They teach you how to do system design, and business planning, and all the uh, various aspects of aquaponics. Um, this is a system that has been running for many, many years. I think they said it was 12 years since they had to add water to the, well, since they had to change the water in the system. They add water to the system constantly, but they do not need to dump the water from the system, unlike conventional hydroponics. This is a system schematic of the UVI aquaponic system, which has been optimized over the years and I think is pretty much a state of the art. We have four fish rearing tanks where large, I think they're 1,500 gallons each, where large numbers of fish are raised and they are harvested in sequence. And then the uh, water from the fish is fed through some rather simple filters. They're, they're only complicated looking when you first get there, but after you understand it, they're fairly simple. And then it's circulated through the grow beds to finally remove the nitrates from the water and then it's circulated back to the sump and then back to the fish tank. So it is circulating throughout the system. There's no gravel in it, it's just the raft system. <coughs> the UBI system uh, uses a six month culture period for what they raise, which is tilapia. Tilapia grow really fast, and especially even in the warm tropical climates, they, they require warmer water. The plant pests and diseases are controlled by biological methods. You can't use any pesticides, herbicides, because the fish will not tolerate it. On that size system, they can get 11,000 pounds of tilapia a year and uh, several tons of basil. There's some of the basil that they've grown. It's, uh, they said 1,400 cases of lettuce a year. On a fairly small system, this would fit within a single conventional greenhouse, 30 by 100 foot greenhouse. Now we've got some serious problems right now, which I believe we can address with aquaponics. Uh, we have uh, food issues, we have food scares, we have food from China, which everybody's worried about, local food even, which has been contaminated somehow. We have corporatization of our food supply system. We have food miles, which you know is average 2,000 miles or something like that from farm to consumer. We have a water issue, obviously, in South Texas. We've had a drought for, what, two years now? They say the climatologists are selling it, telling us that it might get worse. That's not good. And we have organic produce, which is good, but we pay a premium for it. And at times, the corporate world wants to subvert the organic name. So we're all looking for ways of growing our own organic produce and really doing it organically. And then finally, we have the seafood issue, where people are consuming too much seafood from the oceans the seafood we get is often mislabeled and if we know more the more you learn about the state of the ocean and the state of where we are on the overfishing issue the more you know about uh, some very serious problems that we really need to address and I think aquaponics really does does that and then some so aquaponics is gonna if it's if it's adopted widely it will change the game we'll have a truly sustainable food production method which uses only a fraction of the water which we normally use for agriculture and aquaculture. Aquaculture uses a great deal of water and it does a lot of pollution. We can efficiently use our resources that we now call waste and we can convert them into feed for our systems which we can convert into food for us. We can reduce a lot of our pollution problems. And most importantly, in my perspective, we can relieve pressure on our ocean species by providing a substitute protein source which can be grown from something other than ocean fish. There's a lot of aquatic species you can raise for, for uh, in an aquaponic system. There's really not much limit. The better they are uh, at tolerating uh, poor water quality conditions, the better. So like tilapia can tolerate very low quality water. Uh, they are a good clean fish. I say low quality after that, high in nitrates and low in oxygen, which it doesn't make the fish bad, but it, it can challenge a lot of fish that are used to having fresh, fresher water and more oxygen. The tilapia are uniquely uh, adapted to.